Yep, these are the top five body weight mumps. But this is not your average fitness video. In fact, I hate the word fitness. It's mental and physical treat. By the way, I'm traveling right now, so I'm not at my headquarters like my other videos. Now, people struggle with age, past injuries, and roadblocks all the time. And though these five moves might seem weird and unorthodox, we use them every day at the Circuit Room Athletics, and they pave the way to much higher levels of strength, flexibility, and skill like we have in Power Bats. Let's see how you do with just these first. And on this channel, I share what nobody else will, and the truth behind body weight strength and skills development. From beginner to the most advanced, as shown by the over 5,000 students they'll be. So subscribe so you don't miss out on precisely how they're doing it. And if you want help or you have questions, schedule a time with my team. Everything starts with core, and so we'll begin there. I'd say the biggest problem people have is with hamstring tightness and lower back pain. In other words, folding in half and core strength. What's the best way to overcome that? Going way beyond. Can you guess which move I'm gonna tell you? I'll give you a hint and a move every beginner should start with, laying V-ups. See if you can do 50 in a row without pausing and with straight legs. It might be brutal, but it's just basic. Now, let's go beyond it and truly transform, just like in all areas of life, Romans 12-2. Something critical to remember is that body weight strength is still, which is what every human should honestly be doing. It's not as easy as throwing another weight on the bar or going to a yoga class where everyone is doing the same things. There's dozens of moves embedded within each group that help a person get to the pinnacle moment. So if I say the V stand is actually one of the best moves for body weight, not just laying V ups or other silly face it core stuff, people will look at that and say they could never, or others would rush right into it and get mad they can't do it. But it's a pinnacle move. For the V stand, and more importantly, pressing it into a handstand, I personally work through to help resolve tight hamstrings and lower back issues. I work right through the pain as well. Not telling you to do that, just saying what I use and how we train our students. And this builds into pike backflips and flares. Next move, let's do pushing strength. I actually say bridge, all the whips, back walkovers, and all the back handstands. Anybody can do a push up. Well, maybe not anybody, but it's super easy at the lowest end of the spectrum. I'm not at all trying to be mean, but you have to look at it as similar to teaching letters of the alphabet. It's not real words yet just the letters. So a lot of fitness programs, which I can't stand that word, but hey, it's what they're doing. They use push-ups or push-ups on knees or push-ups on blocks, or some sort of wide push-ups or diamond push-ups, or even up the bench press. Who cares if the pecs and shoulders are so tight they rupture or a person has chronic shoulder pain. It's like all the strength vanishes due to a weak link. I say if a person focuses on bridge, they'll build insanely superior upper body strength. And if they can get to a back walkover or a hollow back handstand, it's over. In fact, a back cast frame is just an aerial back walkover. But there's a lot of shock, a lot of force, beyond 2,000 pounds on the ankles and probably something similar on the wrists and shoulders. When I was tumbling one to two hours every day, the strength I built and sustained made human flags, handstands, everything else from ninja strengths effortless. You want to know something interesting too? The V-stand and the bridge are counters to each other, forward bending and backward bending. Third most, the legs. And the pattern in this video of revealing moves actually goes in the same order as our warm-up. So far, core, back, upper body, which we combine back and upper body in this video, then legs, etc., etc. And our warm up includes all of these. We'll break this move into two. One is vent leg, the other stretch. Both the same idea. Horse stance is vent leg, leg iron cross is straight. Starting time for horse stance is 60 seconds. Starting time for leg iron cross is 10 seconds after a max stretch. And sometimes when a person is training high intensity horse stance, they might transition to a, a leg iron cross as a quick rest and then back to horse stance. And vice versa, when the stretch is crazy on middle splits, they might revert to a really low horse stance for rest fit. But please don't insist on the DIY method and go get stuck or hurt because of blind spots or weak links that are unaddressed. 
Like the knees might feel it on either of these, so that must be rebuilt. Like rebuilding a high performance classic car into a hot rod. I want to jump back to upper body for move four. And this goes outside the warm up because it needs some equipment. I have to honestly say that hanging is the best moves for pulling. Skip the lat pull downs, the pull up with bands and all that stuff. Even further, add a sweep. It doesn't need to be a giant around a high bar, but easy swings can generate up to one to two times body weight. And you'll build a V shape plus high tensile tendon strength, far better than any other modality of training. Once you start playing around with swings, they can easily get up to three times body weight of force on your arms, lats, and core, and especially your shoulder joints. And then this strength transfers over to one-arm meat hooks, reverse flags, and even pull-ups or one-arm pull-ups, plus cliches, launches, regrafts, flyaways, and climbing, and everything else you can imagine. But just hanging is starting with some sort of swings, feeling the tension and building the strength. And for the fifth move, let's go to a skill, a car wheel. Absolutely everyone should be able to do a car wheel. Two hands, front hand, back hand, crooked, backwards in a Valdez, no hands with a butterfly kick, vaulting over a block with a car wheel or a butterfly kick, implementing in daily life for jumping over an obstacle. It's used in grappling to pass the guard. It's not just a fun kid's move or a fancy still. Again, it's just about human rear and it should be smooth, not banging joints on the ground. A nice, effortless car wheel that requires good joint mobility, hips, hamstrings, and good core strength. And since I mentioned the order of warm-up, the other sections of warm-up include the wrists and then the knees, feet, and toes. But it's not rocket science or brain search. It's not dangerous. All these moves are just human movements. A combination of strength, mobility, flexibility, and something that nobody talks about, coordination. Want help with any of this or any other aspect of your training to help you achieve your maximum potential? Subscribe and use the links to dive in deeper with us and schedule a time. See you in the next video and in training still.